This module will review various parameters that can be measured using radar data, including dual polymetric observations. Recall that radiation can propagate with a variety of polarizations depending on the orientation of the electrical field, or at a quantum level, the spin of photons. Radiation that propagates along just one dimension is either horizontally or vertically linearly polarized. This is just a, a picture of that here with the blue line representing an example of horizontal polarization and the green line of vertical polarization. Dual polarization radars detect, at a minimum, the return to power in each polarization and the variation in the phase of each polarization. However, their transmissions vary depending on the complexity of the hardware used. Transmitting two polarizations of radiation allows a radar to determine not just the size and radial motion of hydrometeors, but also their shape and composition. We'll look at examples of several radar-derived variables in this module for the same volume of rainfall. The variables listed in red are several dual polarimetric variables. We've already discussed the variables in blue in a previous module, but we'll review them briefly with some images as well. The image shown here is a map of radar reflectivity factor for an area of marine tropical precipitation. The parts of sweeps displayed, so this sort of sector, which is a 90 degree azimuthal sector, will be from a tilt of 2.5 degrees. Note again that the reflectivity is dependent upon the sixth power of the diameters of targets in a contributing volume, meaning that radar reflectivity factor is generally dominated by the largest drops in a volume. Note that you'll sometimes see reflectivity referred to as base reflectivity and composite reflectivity. When used correctly, the term base reflectivity refers to data collected along the lowest sweep, or in this, ang in this situation, what would be the 0.5 degree angle elevation angle. Composite reflectivity is a derived field that illustrates the highest reflectivity in a vertical column and is never less than the base reflectivity. The Doppler velocity, shown here for the same precipitation, is derived from the phase shift between two successive pulses. Negative values, such as what we see up here, indicate that the wind in the gates has some component toward the radar, while positive values indicate that the wind in the gate has some component away from the radar. The true wind vector may also have some cross radial component that's not captured by the radial velocity. For example, even a strong cross ray wind has a radial velocity of zero. You may see the term base velocity used sometimes and this just describes the radial velocity of the lowest tilt. Another field that you may encounter is called storm relative velocity. It is the wind vector that remains after the background motion of the flow is subtracted from the total radial velocity vector. An example of the vector algebra is illustrated at the bottom right here. Suppose that the observed true radial velocity is the blue arrow. But this, the storm in which that observation was made was moving opposite the direction of the orange arrow, orange arrow, so somewhere in this direction, but at a lower magnitude than the blue arrow. But the storm motion would be governed by the mean flow, or that orange arrow flipped over, and so by subtracting the mean flow vector from the radial velocity vector, we then, by doing the vector subtraction, flip that orange arrow over to the way as shown here, and we back out the part of the total radial velocity vector that is caused by kinematics internal to the cell. And that's this red vector. That's the storm relative velocity. We can use this in particular to look for storm scale circulations and the storm relative velocity is particularly useful to look for things like a rotation uh, associated with mesocyclones or tornadoes. In the previous module, we also discussed spectral width. An example of a planned view of spectral width is shown here. Recall this value represents the spread in the distribution of radial velocities of targets in a volume. The green colors here denote spectral widths of 2 meters per second or greater. The first dual polymetric variable we will discuss is differential reflectivity, also known as ZDR.
It is the ratio of the horizontal to vertical reflecti radar reflectivity factors expressed here on a logarithmic scale. Two subscripted H or V letters in the variables denote the polarization of the transmitted, the first letter, and returned signal. So for example, ZHH is derived from the return power in the horizontal polarization for a transmission that was also horizontally polarized. ZDR is in the logarithmic scale measured in decibels or dB. A typical value of ZDR is often between about minus 2 dB and 5 dB, although higher values in particular can be measured. ZDR of zero means that the targets are perfectly spherical. That would mean essentially that ZHH and ZVV would be equal to each other because 10 to the zero gives you one. A non-zero ZDR denotes an oblong hydrometeor. Positive ZDR indicates that the targets are larger along the horizontal plane of the transmitted radiation than along the vertical plane. Large raindrops, for example, flatten as they fall, so they might look oblong like this. It might have larger values of ZDR than the small cloud droplet. Vertically oriented hydrometeors, like this shown here, are associated with various types of, although not all, frozen hydrometeors. And so these vertically oriented, like maybe ice crystals, would give you a very low or even negative ZDR, rather. Because the ZDR is a ratio of reflectivities, it, like the radar reflectivity factor, is largely sensitive to the size of targets in a volume. And the value of ZDR reported is dominated by the largest hydrometeors. The linear depolarization ratio, or LDR, is only observed by radars that are polarization agile, meaning that they separately transmit horizontally and vertically polarized radiation. LDR is defined as the ratio of the cross-polar radar reflectivity factor divided by the vertically polarized radar reflectivity factor. LDR can be used to identify hydrometeors that may cause depolarization of the transmitted signal such as mixed ice and liquid water phase processes. It may also be used to easily identify second trip echo, subject discussed in a different module. In this example, LDR is generally uniform and very small, less than minus 20 dB, indicating that little depolarization occurred in this particular volume, which is the same volume as shown in the previous slides. Many radars transmit radiation at a 45 degree slant angle, meaning that the power sent out by the radar in either the horizontal or vertical polarization is only half the signal that originated at the transmitter. National Weather Service WSR-88D radars, for example, do not measure LDR. A radar that transmits at a 45 degree slant angle simultaneously receives horizontally and vertically polarized components of the return signal. Such radars are not capable of measuring LDR because the transmitted waves are not orthogonal to one another. The differential phase shift, or FIDP, is related to the difference in the phase shift between successive pulses between the horizontal and vertical polarizations. The difference between phase shifts and a single polarization are dominated by the radial velocity of the hydrometeors in a volume as we saw before. However, the difference between the phase shifts and different polarizations, if available, can tell us information about the absorption of the transmitted signal. Therefore, this variable may be useful for estimating the attenuation experienced by a radar beam, especially at X and C band. FIDP at one range is dependent upon its values at ranges closer to the radar as well, so you often see its value change relatively smoothly as a function of range. In this case, the FIDP doesn't really change all that much, although it does tend to change a little bit at uh, far ranges up here in the top left. The specific differential phase, or KDP, is just half the radial derivative of FIDP. KDP is sensitive to exactly how the radial derivative is computed, since it must be done across discrete range gates. It is measured in degrees per kilometer, 
and is typically positive, ranging as high as 5 or more degrees per kilometer. Like ZDR, if it is positive, then oblate hydrometeors with their long axis oriented along the plane of the horizontal beam are present. KDP tends to be close to zero if most hydrometeors in a volume are spherical, or their total number, and therefore mass, is small, and they don't have much of an impact on phi dp. Since KDP is not sensitive to spherical hydrometeors, rain-hail mixtures, in which rain is ablate, but hail is closer to spherical, provide or causes KDP to be an additional useful constraint on radar rainfall estimation. Over the retrieval of KDP from Phi DP is a relatively complicated topic that we'll not delve into during this introduction to radar meteorology. Another nice thing about KDP is that partial beam blockage is not such an issue because it's not the amount of the or the strength of the signal that comes back, it's just the phase shift between the two polarizations. That really matters and we can detect this even with a fairly small signal with some attenuation as long as it's above the background noise. The last dual pole variable we'll discuss is the copolar correlation coefficient often just called the correlation coefficient or rho hv sometimes you'll see it denoted as cc. It describes the linear correlation between, between the return signals and the vertical and horizontal polarizations of radiation transmitted, respectively, in the same polarization. The asterisk in the equation here denotes the complex conjugate, which just means that the imaginary part of this SHH is multiplied by I squared. Values of rho HV are typically pretty close to 1, with values above 0.95 common in a variety of rain and frozen precipitation situations. Smaller values of rho HV can occur in large hail, and a low correlation coefficient below 0.95 is a sign of a radar bright band, a topic that will be covered in a different module. Non-meteorological echo generally has low copolar correlation. Thus, rho HV can be used to identify ground clutter, it is also often used to determine when a tornado is occurring because the debris lofted by a tornado reduces the rho HV. In this example, it's pretty much just rain everywhere, so the rho HV is pretty high. This lowering of the rho HV out here has to do with the radar bright band uh, because this tilt is looking well above the ground this far from the radar. And again, we'll talk about that in a later module. Finally, the dual polymetric variables that we've discussed can be used together to identify the most prevalent type of hydrometeor present at a range gate. Such hydrometeor or particle identification methods typically use Z, ZDR, and KDP to make estimates. The specifics of how such algorithms work is beyond the point of this discussion. However, I show you here one example of a fuzzy logic algorithm. As an example, high ZDR on the y-axis in this top right figure, or in this top left figure, but we're going to focus on the top right, corresponding with low reflectivity, which is shown on the x-axis of these top two figures, corresponds with the light blue box. So high ZDR, low reflectivity in the light blue box. And this represents a category that this algorithm calls ice crystals. The bottom left shows that this category, also in the light blue blocks, typically has a KDP on the y-axis here of well less than one. And this is just one example. As you can see, all these different colors represent different types of ice and liquid water hydrometeor that can be classified by such algorithms. An example of such an algorithm in action is shown here. The top left panel shows an example of C-band reflectivity from a research radar located at Darwin, Australia. The bottom left panel is a vertical cross-section of this reflectivity field drawn through this line right here, this purple gray, to the south-southwest of the radar. This cross-section here was taken through a deep convective core with echo extending as high as 16 kilometers in altitude. The top right shows KDP corresponding with the reflectivity over here on the left. 
So I have KDP values over 1.5 degrees per kilometer, basically darker than the bright oranges in this region in particular, are seen through this cross section. The hydrometeor identification for the cross section is shown at bottom right. Below the zero degree sea level, which is generally around five kilometers, rain was present and represented by the dark blue colors. Near the zero degree sea level, the light blue color represents a category called wet snow, or WS here in this legend up here. And wet snow is basically sticky, kind of melting high ice hydrometeors. The most intense convection, which is right here on the horizontal plot, is seen right here in the vertical cross section. And it is co-located with some grapple, denoted by the yellows and the greens, that extend well up into the cloud. The remainder of the upper part of the cloud consists of dry snow or ice crystals. Thus, the different dual pole variables used together can provide important information about the microphysical structure of observed clouds. Another set of examples is shown here from a WSR-88D, which recall does not include LDR. First, we'll look at the reflectivity at the half degree tilt. And this squall line in southern Michigan, here's some reflectivities that are in the 40s, even up to 50 dBZ along the squall line which generally indicates pretty intense rainfall. We'll take a look at the differential reflectivity. And you're going to see that generally it's pretty small behind the squall line. 0, 1 dB is showing up a lot. But in the squall line, we're seeing values that are a little bit higher. 2, 3, I see even a 4 popped up, I think, in terms of ZDR. In terms of dB is the units used. Correlation coefficient, generally one everywhere, indicating rain. And we can confirm that by looking at the hydrometeor classification, which just shows light to moderate rain in most places, uh, a little bit of heavy rain, and even maybe a little bit of a hail rain mix uh, showing up in the hydrometeor ID just in the most intense echo. And do remember that this is a little bit above the ground, and even more so as we move further away from the radar where we start getting a lot more dry snow, grapple, other high ice hydrometeors, where these echoes are much higher up uh, in the atmosphere than the echoes close to the radar. And finally, we can look at the specific differential phase, same tilt, and again, it's pretty close to zero everywhere. But in the intense convection, we see values 1, 2 degrees per kilometer, not unusual for KDP in rain. The other thing we can do is look at a higher tilt. I'm going to look first at the correlation coefficient up at 3.1 degrees. And what you can see here really clearly is this ring of low correlation coefficient embedded within correlation coefficients that are higher everywhere else. So if I just leave my cursor here for a minute, you see 0.925, some values even below 0.9 pop up every once in a while. And this is the radar bright band that we'll talk about in a different module with that low correlation coefficient that sort of forms a ring that's pretty much equidistant from the center of the circle, which is where the radar is located. You can see this also in the differential reflectivity field to some extent, although it's not super clean in this, where there's some higher values of differential reflectivity. And in stratiform precipitation, which tends to have weak vertical motions in it, you can generally see this in the reflectivity field as well, although it's a little bit more difficult to pick up here because we have such intense convection. We'll see some other examples in stratiform precipitation where the radar bright band is very clear. But indeed, if we consider the hydrometeor classification in this ring, I'll bring this back up again and then show the hydrometeor classification, we'll see that this is an area where there is a lot of ice hydrometeor, grapple, wet snow, that surrounds this area of light to moderate rain that is lower down in the atmosphere as the ray is closer to the radar in this location.